G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another trade related video. Uh, as it currently stands, it is Saturday morning and the intention of this video is to just go through all the trades that have taken place in the first week of the uh, trade period of course and also the free agency period. Free agency period was open for about a week and a half I think. That is now concluded and now the only deals that can take place from this point will be actual trades by way of uh, players uh, swapping clubs or picks swapping clubs as well. So today what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to take you through every deal that went down this week if you haven't been keeping up with it, if you want a little bit of a catch up, I'm going to reiterate what happened and basically some of the logic behind some of the moves that were made. Uh, and then after that, I was thinking of actually going through how all the picks are currently distributed between the clubs, okay? Because we have a new look for in terms of what picks pl uh, different teams hold. And also, I can give you some insight as to what 2024's draft is going to look like as well. Because, of course, we've had a number of clubs trade picks in and out of uh, next year's draft. And uh, we have it all mapped out for us thanks to someone on Bigfooty. So this is a kind of a summary video. Tomorrow, I am going to do a bit of a preview for the last uh, three or four days of the trade period. I need to look up when it actually ends. I think it's Wednesday night. But either way, we'll be back with daily content throughout that period as well. Um, and when all the action kicks off on Monday, that's the next time deals can actually take place. So we're going to start off, if you look at my screen here, let you follow along. We're just on the uh, trade tracker here. And the first deal, I think this is in chronological order, was James Jordan joining the Sydney Swans uh, and he was a free agency move. So Melbourne got an end of second round compensation pick. This one was a little bit quirky in that James Jordan wouldn't normally be a free agent, but because he had been previously delisted, he is, he becomes automatically a free agent. Sydney looking to bolster some midfield depth and they get James Jordan, who was a little bit on the outer at Melbourne and still a handy player. So some reasonable compo. It's better than nothing uh, for a player that was out of contract and uh, reasonable midfield depth for the Swans as well. They have had a pretty big off season as we're about to get into. Uh, the, the second move was Matthew Flynn joining West Coast from GWS. Uh, Matthew Flynn's kind of been a little bit of a victim of Kieran Briggs' ascension to becoming a very good young ruckman in the competition this year. And uh, Flynn was just a little bit on the outer. West Coast ruck situation, semi unexpected retirement of Nick Natanui, who was contracted for another year. Uh, and Matthew Flynn comes in to probably go for a two ruck attack with Williams playing more of a second ruck forward option as well. So Flynn comes in with a, a bit of a promise for some game time in the best 22, you'd think. Then we saw Joel Hamling, a largely forgotten player, to be honest. He made his way from Fremantle to Sydney. Uh, I forget the exact details, but I don't think he's played since 2021 or something. There's something ridiculous there. Forgive me, I can't remember the details. I did say it in a previous video, but he hasn't played a lot of footy. And Sydney obviously looking to bolster their key defensive options. Paddy McCartan sadly, sadly retired, um, obviously missed out on Ben Mackay. Hamling comes in as an experienced depth cover for them as they obviously load up for a premiership. So that's the second player that joins Sydney through free agency in this period we move further down Brisbane eventually won the rights oh the um the race rather for Tom Dode uh looking for a replacement for Mark Adams probably an upgrade if anything and Tom Dode it was sort of reported throughout the year wasn't quite getting the length of contract and security um that he felt he was worth or you know at least desired at the Adelaide Crows the thing with Dode is he is of course a recovering from an ACL so we won't see him in the first half of next year but a pretty good medium term option there for the Brisbane Lions uh, not even from Queensland originally he's from Victoria and uh as a result Adelaide got an end of first round compensation pick which is uh, probably a mutually beneficial result considering they didn't really fight too hard to keep him at least from the surface level uh, what have we got here the power and the dockers did a uh, first round swap so specifically Fremantle obtained Port Adelaide's future first round pick Port Adelaide uh, got pick 23 and a future second round pick out of this deal so Again, on both sides of the coin, Port Adelaide uh, probably wanted to split the pick so they had some more collateral to get this radical uh, deal done. That was a bit of a mouthful. And uh, essentially, I think they've offered 23 or whatever it is now. We'll look on the next page after this. Um, they've offered that to Geelong and Geelong have said no. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but Port Adelaide didn't want to give up a first round pick in its own right to Geelong. So they've given it to Fremantle. Fremantle arguably looking for a way to... Load up on some collateral next year for some uh, targets such as Logan McDonald. So now Fremantle hold two future first round picks, their own and Port Adelaide's. Who else we got here? This was probably the biggest pick swap to take place so far. We've got uh, the Western Bulldogs getting 
Gold Coast pick four, and in return, uh, Gold Coast got pick 10 and 17, as well as Bulldog, the Bulldogs' future first-round pick. So on face value, this is a great deal for the for the Gold Coast Suns in particular. We know they weren't going to use pick four. It was likely to get it absorbed for their first academy player. They uh, they basically needed to accumulate points, so it doesn't really matter what like how high their picks are, unless they were going to get pick one, which they weren't going for. But the Bulldogs, the benefit is, you know, they have Jordan Croft in this year's draft. Pick 10 may have been around the mark he gets bid on, so they wanted to trade that away because um, it would just get absorbed for Jordan Croft. So now what they've done is they've got pick four. A bid for Croft isn't coming before four, so they're going to get pick four, or what is probably now five. And they probably accumulate the points to uh, to match a bid for Croft anyway. So they're going to get two first-round draft picks out of this deal, uh, which is a good move for the Western Bulldogs. Uh, we also saw Todd Goldstein move to Essendon they need a uh, you know a first choice ruck that one um, we knew about already there's not too much to say there North Melbourne didn't fight too hard to keep him obviously a young list that is trying to refresh and he's going to get more opportunity at, at the do- uh, Dons you'd expect Ben Mackay finally moved to Essendon as well in, um, in what has been a big off season so far for Essendon so the Goldstein and Mackay join and uh, North Melbourne are really happy with this because they got band one compensation because the contract warranted band one compensation North Melbourne get a pick after their first pick in the draft so they get pick three for a player in Ben Mackay who on the open market probably goes for a pick in the 20s so a bit of a quirk in the system uh, Essendon get their man they don't have to give up anything in the trade Ben Mackay nets North Melbourne pick three and they have a really strong uh, position in this year's draft with picks two and three we'll go up a little bit James Harms uh, joined the Western Bulldogs uh, we knew that Harms was on the outer at Melbourne he was linked to four clubs. I don't even know if the Bulldogs were one of the four clubs it was first reported that he was linked to. So uh, it was a bit of a surprise when right before um, this deal happened, he requested a trade to the Western Bulldogs. But the Bulldogs obviously consolidated a bit of mature midfield depth. Um, obviously, they lost Lockie Hunter last year, and I guess there was probably a, a spot on the list for him where they think he can add some value. Who else we got? Stevens joined North Melbourne. This one was an interesting one. Former top five pick, not quite getting a regular gig at the Sydney Swans. Uh, this deal happened. Stevens, along with pick 25, made its way to North Melbourne. And uh, the Swans received 44 and one of North Melbourne's uh, future priority picks. So North Melbourne get a relatively mature, young, talented outside mid to join their list. They get pick 25 as well. They also trade that priority pick. So if you remember when that priority pick for next year was awarded, it was subject to review in 12 months time, which meant North Melbourne knew that if they didn't trade it, there was a chance they were gonna lose the pick. Now it's been traded, it can't be taken back. So Sydney now have an extra first round pick next year and uh, they probably will be loading up for a bid for Caden Cleary in the second round of this year's draft, which means 44 helps them uh, have a few points as well and 25 uh, they didn't need because that's probably around the range he gets bid on at this current stage. What else we got? This one was an interesting one. So Melbourne traded up from 14 to 11 and gave up 27 and 35. This one was an eyebrow raiser because they only moved three spots up the draft. Gold Coast are accumulating points. This one, you know, that's a no-brainer for them. They would have gotten a stack of points out of this. I'm not sure exactly what. Uh, But Melbourne were willing to give up their third and fourth picks to get three spots higher in the draft. And the rumor is that they only want to take two picks in this year's draft, six and 11. It either gets them closer to a bid for Harley Reid and pick one, or you know they're just happy to just to take the two picks in six and 11. We'll see what happens there, but a, a very curious trade that one was. Sorry guys, I am going to pause the video just for one second to bring you an important message from Jerusy's Athlete Academy. If you're a truly dedicated footballer and the season is over, it's time to dive into the preseason grind. Now, Jerusy is a qualified strength and conditioning conditioning coach. Therefore, he understands your need to become stronger, faster, and a fitter athlete for next season. Now, he's got tried and tested strength programs that have produced remarkable results for athletes in 2023, making them more explosive, harder to tackle, and intimidating one-on-one competitors out on the field. Now, imagine showing up to the first day of preseason with an out-of-shape physique, lacking fitness and dreading the 2km time trial. No, seriously, picture it. If you haven't been there before, I have been there. It is terrible. When I was playing footy in my uni days, the first day of preseason every year, I was coming last. I was getting beaten by the fat kids. Now, if you fall into this category, you're already playing catch up and there's gonna be those that started their preseason earlier and they're prepared for success. 
Now, what Druzy is here to do is help you prevent that scenario and ensure you're the athlete who dominates from day one. And by dedicating just a few months of dedicated effort starting now, you can guarantee you'll witness a huge progression in your performance. You'll become more explosive, you'll build better endurance, you'll possess greater strength. This transformation that we're talking about is entirely within your control and will set the stage for an exceptional 2024 football season. Now, if any of what I've said has resonated for you and you think it's a good fit, but you're still a little bit hesitant, that's cool, because Druzy's actually offering a risk-free one-week trial to the first 10 individuals who direct message Druzy's Athlete Academy on Instagram. So I'll put the details below. You message Druzy's Athlete Academy on Instagram and you simply write the message free preseason. And if you do end up going through a program for Druzy's Athlete Academy, remember to use the code TRUE4020 for 20% off. Burgess, I actually forgot to report this on this one at the time, forgive me, but Burgess and Pick 14 made its way to Adelaide, Gold Coast Shed, uh, obviously a, a VFL uh, gun goal kicker that they couldn't couldn't crack a game for them, and he returns back to his native Adelaide. I can't remember if he's from Adelaide originally. I think he is. And uh, in return, Gold Coast received 23 and 26, which again, they're stockpiling points. 14 didn't mean that much to them. 23 and 26 do. So good result again for the Suns. They've actually had a pretty productive offseason up to this point. Uh, then we saw them swap uh, their pick 18 into next year's draft for one of North Melbourne's uh, two priority picks. So next year's priority picks probably around the 20 range. They give up two spots in the draft, but again, Pick 18 in this year's draft didn't mean too much to Gold Coast. They have so many picks now that they're pushing assets into next year and uh, they are in a strong position next year to potentially trade with other clubs. We know the next year's draft is very compromised too with a lot of like academy players and father-sons. So to stockpile a lot of points um, really gives a few clubs opportunities to potentially trade up next year. So Gold Coast doing their, uh, doing a good job there. And, and North Melbourne, curiously, I don't know if they're going to take all five picks in the top 20 of this year's draft or if they're using this as potential collateral for a trade-up. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, next, we saw Brody Grundy finally join the Sydney Swans. We knew about this one for a little while. There was talk he was going to go to Port Adelaide a few weeks ago, and now he's obviously decided on Sydney. And Sydney, uh, Melbourne, as part of a trade, got a uh, pick 46 in this year's draft, which uh, I don't even know if they have anymore. They might do. We'll get to that. And a future second round pick. So more points for next year should they try and trade up um, with another club. In the big day as well, I think this was the same day, Taylor Adams joined uh, the Sydney Swans as well. So they've gotten... Who have they gotten so far? That's Hamling, Jordan, Grundy, and Taylor Adams, particularly Undy, Grundy and Adams, Undy and Gradams. They, uh, they used to be a pretty formidable midfield pairing around that 2018 to 2022 mark or 2021. This one, interestingly, was one that uh, allegedly, reportedly rather, I shouldn't say allegedly, but reportedly was initiated by Taylor Adams in between the prelim and the grand final. So obviously, um, I don't know if there's any more to the story, but I think midfield minutes was one factor and maybe moving back to Sydney where he obviously started his career, uh, or at least GWS, the same city, uh, that was obviously his motivation. And I think he's on a two-year deal there at least. North Melbourne get another experienced player in Zach Fisher onto their list in a pick swap with Carlton. Uh, Zach Fisher and pick 17 went to North. So again, another first round draft pick. Carlton were happy to let Fisher and 17 go for 21 and 25, which is an interesting deal. I think Carlton wanted to split picks a little bit, get another pick in the second round, and we're willing to let go of 17. There's a lot of talk that around this part of the draft, between 17 and 25, it's relatively even. And so Carlton preferred to have two later picks slightly behind 17 because it didn't make too much difference to them. And North Melbourne get another first rounder. So very, very productive a trade period so far. Then we saw uh, this one is today. Obviously, Jade Gresham joined Secuta and Essendon got pick 21 as part of that as their band two compensation. I do expect this to be traded in the future, potentially part of a Liam Henry deal. Um, but either way, Essendon cap off um, at this point. They've still got some work to do, actually, but they've got Goldstein, they've got Mackay, they've got Gresham, potentially Dersmer as well. So very productive, again, from Essendon. Uh, we'll make a video at the end of the trade period as to how much we think this is actually going to improve Essendon and various other clubs this trade period. But for now, uh, we'll move on to the Demons who got Tom Fullerton. Obviously, Grundy's out the door. Um, they don't have a worked out forward dynamic yet. So Fullerton is both a backup ruck 
and a key forward. And uh, while he is not necessarily the most decorated player, he's obviously going to get some opportunity at Melbourne, you'd think. And the Brisbane Lions, uh, comparatively, I guess there was more competition. And uh, yeah, Tom Fullerton obviously thinks he can get the best out of his footy by moving to the Melbourne Footy Club. And the opportunities possibly will be there, especially if they don't work out their forward line mix. And again, the backup ruck to Max Gorn. And God forbid if Max Gorn gets injured, you know, they need to have a contingency there now that Grundy's not there. So that was the last deal. There we go. All right, so I've taken you through all the deals and basically the logic behind all of them. Uh, What we can do now is kind of change tabs and you can look at um, what is the current state of play in terms of draft picks, and this will give you some insight into next week as well, and then we can look at 2024. So let's have a look at 2023 here. So again, I'm using my good friend Law on Bigfooty. This is the best resource that I've found for keeping up with live trades. Um, Or, you know, even throughout the season, the latter fluctuations, you can see the draft hand change as well. So at the top there, you got North Melbourne with the best hand, as I said. 15, 17, and 18, I think they will use to to condense down into a higher pick. Maybe maybe it's West Coast. Maybe it is Geelong is another club that I've talked about there. West Coast have a reasonable hand there. Obviously, that was originally pick 19, has become pick 23. Gold Coast have heaps of picks in the 20s to match their academy bids. Melbourne with just the two first rounders. Adelaide with three top 20 picks. They've been productive so far. Probably going to miss out on Harrison Petty, I reckon. So that will probably be what they take to the draft. GWS with still their two first rounders. And who else we got? The Bulldogs up there. Now that's pick five. Who else has made some damage this trade period? Uh, Carlton condensed down to 22 and 26. Geelong still at pick eight there. Their second pick is 87. This is why I think they might trade with North Melbourne for 15 and 17 potentially. And uh, then there's also the Radaglia deal. So that could become 15, 17, and 23 if, if Geelong think that's better than seven on its own. We'll see. Port Adelaide uh, now into the draft at 25. You think they probably won't keep that pick considering the trades they've got to do. And uh, Fremantle have really, really traded out of this draft. So one, one club that's been pretty inactive is Richmond. We know that Kaczynski is probably going to get done next week, but yeah, their draft hand is not very strong. Um, whether they use future picks to trade into this year's draft, we'll see, I guess, in real time. But we can take a little quick look at 2024. And this one's interesting. Obviously, this one's a little less mixed around. Obviously, the 2024 season hasn't happened yet. All of the draft positions that you see here are based on the 2023 ladder. So West Coast hold pick one, hypothetically, again. Uh, Gold Coast already have the most points for next year because they have uh, their own pick four because that's where they finished this year. And they've got the Bulldogs pick 10 because that's where they finished as well. Uh, That pick 20 is highlighted. That is because it's North Melbourne's priority pick. So they've done a good job of trading into next year's draft already. Uh, who else has done well? We got Fremantle with two picks in the first round. They got five and fourteen. Uh, who else has two first rounders? Sydney because they have North Melbourne's end of prior, uh, end of first round priority pick, and uh, that might be it. Who's traded out? Port Adelaide don't have a first rounder next year either, so that's two years in a row they've kind of traded out of the draft. And of course, the Western Bulldogs also don't hold a first round draft, draft pick next year as well. So the Dogs really did give up a lot for pick four this year. They gave up 10, 17 and a future first. That's That's a steep price, and it's almost better than the offer West Coast got for pick one from North Melbourne. Yeah, I'll let you stew on that one. But there you go. That is a good summary of what's happened. I think it's a good summary. You tell me in the comments, and um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a good snapshot about what's to happen. And like I said, previewing next week is going to be a separate video, probably released about 24 hours after you're watching this one. So um, yeah, we'll see you guys. But let me know in the comments what have you thought of all the moves made so far. Um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate your support, lady, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.